what you're looking at right now is, is the, the policy editor, the actual rule system um, inside of our platform. It's a platform that has uh, over 200 rules and over 300 device, uh, devices supported from a, a collection perspective. Um, but more importantly, it's the, it's the granularity with which these rules can be built, uh, also with which they, they come standard with the product. But the most important thing is that the rules are built in layman's terms. They're describing activities which, you know, even uh, a, a, a simple, you know, entry-level security professional understands. Uh, a backdoor event after a buffer overflow attack. And, of course, there's certain variability there. Um, how many of each and over what period of time I have flexibility over changing these. They ship with the ones that I will say, you know, are out of the box, sufficient to start watching for the normal behaviors that are suspicious. So it's the transactions and activities that I can say without a shadow of a doubt are suspicious. Brute force attacks um, are a great example like the description I gave earlier. Brute force logins are described by X number of failed logins over Y number of minutes. Well, as Dave mentioned, what about the slow and low attack? What about the guy who's smart enough to know that if he only tries to log in four times a day and then moves on, he can do it over a course of six months and never be seen. So the ability to take those durations and span them out in very long periods of time is, is critical, but more so it's the ability to take the queries that are now being built as part of that, that uh, event correlation application, the ECA, take the terminology and, and understanding of what that pattern looks like and play it back over historical data. But in terms of building rules, in terms of taking this, this infrastructure and understanding enough about your environment to build your own Boolean equations, you've now got the flexibility to do so um, with literally a system that allows you to paint on the screen what those event patterns might look like. So for instance, I could very easily generate a report or a, sorry, build a, a correlation rule that asks for the following equations. A few things might be relevant to watch for in my expression. I'm going to say, generically speaking, that I'm going to, by watching for something like a, an unauthorized access by a user other than admin, I'm going to say that the user that I'm going to watch for might be outside of or not in a group that I call my authorized admins. And just so you know, the authorized admins is a, an array, it's a variable that I create in my system that allows me to name those individuals who are uh, of that terminology, they're authorized to perform administrative tran transactions. So I have a number of those authorized admins that are listed, and I can now add one more rule that says, well, if the event that I'm watching is being generated from a non-admin user, and I'll say the condition also exists that maybe the time of day is not in my normal working hours, which I'll say is from 9 to 5. And if the 9 to 5 value is not met, and the username is not one of my admins, and I'm already hitting this equation. But let's make sure we're looking at the exact things I'm watching for necessary for the transaction. I'm going to specify as well that the type of event that I should be watching for is in my normalization pattern identified by the following. It is part of the authentication class, and under authentications, I'll say it's a login. Now, under login, there's thousands of different events describing all the different transactions from all the vendors we support. But the important thing is login, generically speaking, will talk about all authentication requests, transactions, both successful and unsuccessful. But by adding that to this, this group of objects, it says if it came from a non-admin user and it's after hours and it's, it's a login transaction, then I think this is a more significant activity, and I'll call this my unauthorized logins. And this might have a much higher severity ranking of, let's say, 90. It's completely nested Boolean expression, which means I can literally say if those three things are true or the following one thing might be, might be valid, I can also say if the user is in this list of users I've created now called terminated employees. Okay. So if I have any event from a terminated employee or I have a login by a non-admin user after hours, then this equation would be true and I will then send a new event, this new incident level description called unauthorized login with a higher severity level. And that, of course, can then be the trigger that might send notifications. It could send um, reports or, or, or identifications. And more importantly, then, it's the, you know, it's the indication for the operator to then pay a little more attention to some area of, of the, the network. 